Great to see everyone on this Wednesday evening. And uh, this is a fine crowd for a Wednesday weeknight here in the auditorium. Of course, we have many people watching out there uh, live streaming, and we're glad to have you. Glad to have the children all down here. Just sing in a moment. And uh, we've got a unique situation tonight as well. Our very, 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 very close friend, Brother Larry Barrett, passed away. And uh, been our friend more than 50 years, and I'm just broken hearted. Yesterday morning he passed away. And uh, we've got something unique we'll do here in a little while in relation to that and talk a little bit about Larry. I'm not sure if they're watching down there. I wish they were watching tonight. But uh, anyway, they've presented a funeral service today. Please pray for the Barrett family. And uh, there's a number of those. We'll come back to that in just a little while. But uh, uh, I'm glad I'm here at the house of God. Glad you're here with us tonight. What's a read of 1 Samuel chapter number 8? Then all the elders of Israel gathered themselves together and came to Samuel unto Ramah and said unto him, Behold, thou art old, and thy sons walk not in the ways and thy ways. Now make us a king to judge us like all the nations. But the thing displeased Samuel, and they said, Give us a king to judge us. And Samuel prayed unto the Lord. Israel had not had a king all those years, and all of a sudden, what was their motivation? They wanted to be like all of the other nations. Let me tell you, anytime you're desirous to be like everybody else, you're in deep water, spiritually speaking. And uh, we're, we are to be different. We're to be, the Bible uses the word peculiar. Uh, no, we're, maybe we're pretty peculiar. Oddballs, weirdos, I don't know what. But I know we are not as weird as a whole lot of other people in this world. And uh, so they wanted a king, and uh, but we've got one king, Jesus Christ, and we praise his wonderful name. That's why we gather together tonight. Let's pray together. Dear mighty God, we're so thankful we can come to you in prayer. And Lord, we're so thankful there's a place called heaven. I thank you for Jesus Christ, the Savior of the world, that was willing to be obedient, to die at the cross, and shed his blood to wash our sins away. Thank you for the triumphant resurrection day when Jesus arose from the grave to bring us eternal life. I thank you that we can be gathered together on this Wednesday evening. I do thank you for America. Lord, be with our president and the vice president and all of the leaders. And Lord, we live in a dismal time governmentally, ones that have left the Bible behind but may the Spirit of God be with our governmental leaders, our clergy, our congregations, and the people of America. Oh, God, we pray that you bring revival back to America. We surely need it desperately. We thank you, though, that as Christians, that by the grace of God, we can keep on keeping on. We can have peace in our hearts, no matter what, because we know that we are not dependent upon the government. Our sufficiency is not in the United States of America government but in the King of Kings, our mighty God, our precious Father. We thank you for that. And your kingdom cannot be destroyed. Now, Lord, may your hand blessed be upon this service tonight. Help the children to get much out of their programs, all of us here in the auditorium as well, and likewise those that are watching live stream. I pray to God that this would be a wonderful night for each and every one of us as we have gathered together. We give you all the glory. In Jesus' name, amen. 183 in your hymn book, 183. Let's all stand, please. Everybody standing. Let's sing together. We're marching to Zion. 183. 183. I told our musicians 83, so the mistake. We're on 183. We're marching to Zion.
says, Let those refuse to sin who never knew our God, but children of the heavenly king, but children of the heavenly king may speak their joys abroad. May speak their joys abroad. And uh, boy, right now it seems like a lot of times the children of the king and Christians can't always speak their joys abroad. Or we try to, and there's that persecution that can come along all through the ages. But there will be a time when the children of God will get to speak their voices abroad and there will be no punishment. And the ones that don't want to sing and the ones that want to reject Jesus, too bad for them. It's over at that point because the Christians win. And I love then that last verse. It says we're marching on Emmanuel's ground. And that's his turf. And we're singing about heaven. Emmanuel's ground, his turf, his heaven, his kingdom will reign. And so let's sing that verse two one more time. And uh, think about, boy, we get to sing right now here on this earth. But we'll sing forevermore in heaven. And nobody will hold us back and, and stop us from singing out. Verse two. Who let those refuse to sing
Can you play it one more time there, just on the instruments? You'll receive it. someplace and I know by the way a lot of translations of modern translations they have changed the word mansion to room and uh, I have a lot more than just a little room somewhere a little cabin you know it's not that way I've got a mansion and I surely am glad for that not that money will matter in heaven not that a mansion will matter in heaven what will a mansion be worth who cares right in heaven it won't matter one bit well, Sunday's the Lord's Day. We go, we'll be gathered together once again to commemorate the resurrection of Christ. So I thought that was Easter. Every Sunday is Easter, right? Every Sunday we gather to worship the risen Christ. And the first day of the week when Jesus arose, look forward to that Sunday morning, <laughs> Sunday night, the Lord's Supper. Looking forward to that service so very, very much. Hope you'll be right in your place there Sunday evening. If you've not yet signed up for the banquet, I hope that you'll do that. And uh, you can see Debbie about that. We have a great crowd, by the way. It's really thrilled. The first day we talked about it, last Sunday, uh, a lot of people got signed up. I just want to urge you now, if you got signed up, make sure that you follow through with that. Um, just in another, well, I think a week from today, we have to let them know at, uh, down at the Waltz's there, we have to let them know how many we have coming. And so we need to have you get signed up and see Debbie about that right away cost is there in the bulletin, but it, it's five dollars less than that, and that's the uh, gratuity, uh, as well as the other cost, but it'll be five dollars less than what that total is. So keep that in mind, and I uh, hope that you'll get signed up February 13th, and that'll be down at Salivisburg, I think everyone's familiar with that. I failed to get an envelope. Can somebody get me an envelope there, please? And uh, I know the offering isn't till the end of the night. But uh, I always have mine ready when it comes to offering time. And uh, so the children will come sing, and I will get that ready so I have it for the offering. Thank you, Jason. Appreciate that. Let's pray and ask God's blessings on the offering. Lord God, thank you for your mercy and love and patience with us and your peace and your grace. Thank you for these children that can be here tonight. Bless them as they sing. Speak to my heart, all of our hearts, through the music that they sing. Bless now the offering. I thank you for the buses. Thank you for the ones that came last Sunday and those that worked with them. And Lord, I pray that your blessings be upon this offering. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. <laughs>
tonight. And uh, it's fun here. And uh, good job. And appreciate you singing, be here faithful, have a great time. I know some of these kids are starting to earn badges. You might see the badges on their vest. And uh, they're working hard, memorizing, and doing their best. And so they're going to head on over to the school building. Make sure you get your coats, your Bibles, all those good things. Take your hymn book. Turn to hymn 403, Near My God to Thee. Hymn 403, Near My God to Thee. Let's all stand here, please, and sing it out. Followed him. 
When God called Moses to lead the nation of Israel out of Egypt and into the promised land, God promised that his presence would go with them. As the disciples struggled to keep their boat afloat during the storm, we are reminded that they were in the ship because Jesus entered the ship and they followed him. What an encouraging thought after nine months of pandemic. First of all, we must remember that we are here because we followed Jesus. Secondly, we must remember that when he called us to go, he also promised that his presence would be with us. Not only are these great promises as we move into the future, but they give us praises as we look back over the past. We praise the Lord that he has been with us the whole way. In the month of November, we were able to begin hosting the church services in our home with up to 20 people in attendance and others attending through live stream. But once they hit the month of December, they were able to move all services back into the church building. Please continue to pray for two ladies, Jesse, GC, Jesse, I guess it is, and Omar, two young adults uh, from Venezuela. And uh, these two will be traveling back to Venezuela to be married in the presence of their family. And they have asked me to have marriage counsel with them before they leave. Please be in prayer for possible, for possible furlough in 2021. They've been gone now for three years in Argentina, and so they're thinking about coming back, but not sure of all the travel restrictions and, and uh, coming back into the States and then going back to Argentina, how that's all going to work. And uh, they're in January of 2022, so two years from now, they will be able to apply for permanent residency in Argentina and must return um, to Argentina before December of 2021. So they're hoping sometime this year to get back to the States, but then by December 2021, get back with Argentina. So pray for God's clear guidance as to our next ministry step after furlough and pray for wisdom. And each of these missionaries right now, um, you know, it's, it's a time where they're trying to figure out um, when they come back to the States. And some, I saw one, one of the Deku boys is still here in America, been here for a long time, can't get back to where they are missionaries at. So it's going to be a tough thing dealing with all that. So pray for them to have wisdom and God's will. Is it right now God's will to stay put for a while, minister in America, maybe a year or two, go back to them? Or is it God's will to continue to stay in their, their country for a few years so everything slows down with the pandemic? And so we all need wisdom, and, and especially the missionaries at this time. Our prayer list tonight, 1 Timothy 2, 1 and 2, I exhort therefore that first of all supplications, prayers, intercessions, and giving of thanks be made for all men, for kings and for all that are in authority, that we may lead a quiet and peaceable life in all godliness and honesty. Church request for God's power and manual. Tonight we want to highlight the soul winning and visitation. And uh, even tonight, when you walk out that door, there's several of those in invitation cards sitting there. Grab one. And between now and Sunday, hand somebody one of those tracks and witness to somebody. And then continue to pray for Pastor Bixler leading the ministry here. You know, out of town tonight, pray for Glenn Butchster Jr. And uh, remember this one. Shut-ins tonight, pray for Tony DeSalvo's mother. And then Irene Cooper, or Irene Campbell, I should say, last week was... Um, in the hospital, she now is a nursing home, and so we're glad about that. And she's hopefully uh, getting some therapy and hopefully get home very soon. But continue to pray for Mr. and Mrs. Moyer. This is Eric Moyer's grandfather, has been very sick, and so pray for him this evening, please. And uh, pray for the unsaved and unchurched uh, that these ones will be saved. Special request for the Ferguson family tonight, and then pray for those people leading our country, our governors, our mayors, our president, those will be wise and follow biblical ways. U.S. military, Max Diot. Go at home, highlight two of these, Eric Rank and then Tara Snopper. Remember these two tonight. Bereavement, and uh, as Pastor mentioned, Larry Barrett went to be with the Lord, and so pray for this family of Larry Barrett. Um, and this day of the funeral, I, I heard a voicemail there, a thing today from his wife, and, and she's excited. He's in heaven, a better place, but so sad to say goodbye, so pray for her. If you remember my sister-in-law, Edie um, Boyce, this is Heidi's brother, uh, Paul, he's married to her, his wife's name is Edie, but her sister is only 42 years old and she passed away on Monday night. And sad situation, she's been involved in drugs um, most of her life and, and, and just a lot of struggles. And so the neat thing, she gave birth to a little baby girl 
back in the spring, and one of our uh, Heidi's other brothers, they had no children, they adopted this little baby girl. Um, and then here they found out they got pregnant a few months later, so they had these two little baby girls, but the little baby girl they adopted, this would have been her mother that passed away, she had a drug overdose, and, they, and she passed away Monday night. So um, the little girl doesn't know anything about it, never know anything about it. Um, thankfully, she has wonderful parents, but I have already met Edie, my sister-in-law, and she's a wonderful lady. I know she's grieving deeply right now, loss of a sister at a young age. Um, so pray for them. I think a funeral maybe on Saturday. And then missionary family, Chuck Weber family, Mongolia. Pastor? Last Wednesday night, I started a sermon. I thought I was going to preach the whole sermon last Wednesday night, but I only got one point done from Daniel chapter number seven. Primarily, the scripture, the theme of the message was that the the kingdom of God cannot be destroyed. But I, I just I think it'd be good tonight. I, I just since I got to church, uh, I feel the Spirit of God has directed me totally different. And uh, so I want to take a little time here tonight and uh, talk to you about the family of God. And, and uh, I, yesterday morning, about 6.30, I got a text that Larry Barrett had passed away. We've been praying for him. He got COVID back around Thanksgiving. And we've been praying diligently, all of us had, for the last uh, two months. And uh, But the Lord... You know, one of the challenging things for all of us in life is to accept the Lord's will, right? That's always a difficulty for all of us. And, uh, but I do want, I, I, for the sake of a lot of you, I, I want to just go back, and, and this is what I feel the Lord's leading me to do here tonight, because, you know, there's a lot of pilgrims that come along in the life and history of the church. And then children are born, and we get older, and new people come in. And so people do not know the history of a church. Someone may be thinking, well, why have you been talking so much about Larry Barrett? I know he's your friend, but so what? We all have friends, right? Well, that's very true. But how it connects to our church, I want to take a few moments and just talk to you a little about the goodness of the Lord and the history of our church. In 1955, before 1955, 1955, that was a long time ago, wasn't it? I was barely born. Uh, four years old I was in 1955. But uh, in 1955, Pastor Hemmons, before that point, Pastor Hemmons, G, Dr. G. Blair Hemmings, never met him. I wish I could have. But he was the pastor of a church, another church here in Williamsport. He was part of, he was a Baptist, but he was part of a more denominational kind of a Baptist church. I think all of you know we are independent Baptists, so we're not Southern Baptists, we're not American Baptists, and a whole lot of other kinds of Baptists. We are independent Baptists. Hallelujah for that. Amen. I couldn't be anything else. But he was part of an organization which, according to his own biblical beliefs, he felt that organization, uh, that Baptist organization, was becoming liberal and compromising, and they were. And uh, so he, after a while, decided that it was time to start an independent Baptist church. Pastor Hemmons uh, had some others that agreed with him, and so they met in some homes to start with. He resigned the church he was at, and they met in some people's homes, and then down at the, uh, uh, in those days, the Lycoming Hotel. You know what the Lycoming Hotel is, don't you? I mean, you know what the Lycoming Hotel is. All right, a few of you. Now the genetic, right? But it was the Lycoming Hotel, used to be called that. 
they rented a room there and, and had church there. And without going into lots of details on that, the church, that little group began to grow. And eventually, they were able to find, come out here to 1730, four mile drive, and find this little piece of property here. I say little piece of property because at that time, the property line was only about five feet just to the east of our wall right here. We didn't own any of the parking lot, the houses up there, none of that church did not own that. There were no buildings here. It was just uh, this one or two acres, uh, that narrow strip that came down through here. And uh, so the church the group decided to purchase that. They continued to meet in private ways, in private locations and not in a church building. But the church grew and eventually they got this land here. Eventually they built a parsonage and uh, they built the parsonage uh, with the idea that the church would be meeting in the basement of the parsonage. Now one thing that was so beneficial for that, for our family, we had four bathrooms. Two bathrooms, a eh, bath and a half in the main part of the house, but then they had a men's and a women's bathroom in the basement of the house. So that was pretty awesome. You know, we had four bathrooms. Not a lot of houses that uh, have four bathrooms. But uh, anyway, they started meeting there in the basement of the parsonage. Once again, the church grew. And uh, they were winning souls and started bus routes. Pastor Hemmons started bus routes way back in the 1960s. We've been running church buses for way over 50 years. Uh, Pastor Hemmons had it thriving. Uh, way back then. Once again, because of the bus ministry at all, they needed Sunday school space. So they built attached right next to the parsonage there in the back of uh, the parsonage, what we commonly call the flat roof building. It's a flat roof. It is a pain in the neck. Right now, it's got leaks and it drives us. The Ferguson's, it drives you nuts with leaks, right? They've got their puppet stage down there for the preschool. And uh, it just leaks terribly constantly. And we've put, we've tried all kinds of things and just can't get rid of that water. But they built that for Sunday school purposes and the church still continued to grow. And Pastor Hemmings was teaching people and leading them in a great way. So finally, they felt like they needed to build a church auditorium, regular auditorium to have where the people could meet. And so, in 1962, they broke ground for this auditorium, but it wasn't like we see it tonight. Uh, very few of you remember uh, what it used to look like, but uh, as we commonly say, where these thermostats are on the wall right over here, one on each side where those thermostats are, that was the that was the back that was the wall back here. That's how big the church was. It was those thermostats that way. Uh, the bathrooms were back there. And uh, the other two rooms were there, but the church only went from those thermostats back. That was all with Pastor Hemmings. And there's a reason I'm telling you all of that, but that was all with Pastor Hemmings. During that period of time, Pastor Hemmings, he had three children when he started the church, had three children throughout time, but he had three children and a son, one son and two daughters. And um, Lida Bell, Larry Barrett's wife, was one of those daughters. She was the youngest of the three. And uh, they had a school teacher that came to church here um, that lived and taught school. He taught school all the way down in the Warrior Run School District, but he came up to here to church. He had a young man, and a young teenage man in his classes at school that he befriended lived down that way at McEwensville and uh, befriend him and, and while he was a teenager, was a young man, he invited him to come to church with him and he did come to church and he got saved. His name was Larry Barrett. That was way back in the 60s, late 60s, maybe middle 60s I guess it was. Long time ago, Larry Barrett uh, was just a young, single and young adult man and uh, he went and did some military time and Lida Bell graduated from Loyal Sock right next door. 
And uh, I, don't know, I, I don't know if she's probably watching. Maybe she's watching out there right now. I don't know. But uh, she'd probably correct me on some of these facts. But anyway, she went to nursing school here in town and uh, became a nurse. And uh, along the path, met up with Pam Metzger, Todd, uh, I don't know if it turned out to be, but uh, anyway, Pam and, and uh, Linda Phillips, they all were kind of a clan that stuck together. And um, the Larry and Lana Bell, they began to fall in love with each other. And um, they finished up the things they were doing right out of high school. And they went to Tennessee Temple. And uh, Pastor Hemmons now started this whole thing. He was pastor for 14 years. Built the parsonage, bought this land, built the parsonage, Blackwood Village, the auditorium that was back to there. Church is growing, thriving, doing very, very well. If I recall, I believe he was 59 years old, not very old, in his 50s anyway, and he had a massive heart attack and passed away. Of course, the church is reeling now, and Larry Lidabell, I forget all of the exact timing now, but I know it was like at the exact same month they got married. Difficult time in their life. That was September of 1969 that he passed away. In the meantime, I'm in college at Tennessee Temple and uh, was there one semester as a freshman in college. Uh, my father lived, was pastor in Dyer, Indiana, Dyer Baptist Church in Dyer, Indiana. And uh, my dad had been there eight years and I knew when I went off to college, there was a church in Michigan, one in Georgia, one in Tennessee, that were all trying to get my dad to become their pastor. And he was going around candidating these different churches. And so I didn't know. I went to be a freshman in college. I did not know where I was going to live in just a little while. I knew he was planning on moving somewhere. I didn't even know about this place. But then in October, well, um, when Pastor Emmons passed away, they called up Dr. Lee Robertson, they called up Dr. Tom Wallace and Dr. Dolphus Price, three very well-known preachers nationally throughout America, and all three of them recommended Everett Bixler. They called Arnold Springman, called him up, and chairman of the board called him up, and all three of them said my father's name. They recommended my father. He came here in October, preached a weekly revival, question, throw all that to go through. Anyway, the church then called him to become pastor, and so just a week or two ago, uh, marked 51 years since my father's first day here. Now, all of that, back to me, it's my second semester in college. And as I'm there in college, I did not know any of these people that were from this church. But I got hurt at the gym one day. I spent a lot of time at the gym playing basketball. And I got hurt one day, and so I went over to the infirmary. I walk into the infirmary. I've told this before, but uh, what's your name? You know, they have to do their regular little paperwork. And what's your name? David Bix. David Bixler! We've been wanting to meet you! And of course, I'm just a little freshman. I weigh about 145 pounds. You know, I'm just this little runt. And I'm thinking, what is going on here? There was three ladies. And uh, Pam and Lida Bell and Linda Phillips. And I'm thinking, what in the world? And so, um, anyway, then they told me that they were all from Emmanuel Baptist Church in Waynesport, Pennsylvania. And this was about a month after my father had become pastor. And uh, I say all that to say, wow, that started a friendship which I can hardly even talk about. I did a lot of crying yesterday. That started a long friendship. I only met Lila about that time, but it wasn't long that I met Larry. That would have been in the, uh, that would have been like February of 1970, and met Larry. And I just loved the guy at Lila Bell. And uh, we became so close. And they were working at a church on weekends. They would drive up to Knoxville, Tennessee. It's about 100 miles. They'd drive up to Knoxville, Tennessee and work. Some of you know the name Bob Bevington. 
Brother Bob, they called him Brother Bob. And uh, he pastored there in Knoxville, Tennessee, a large, thriving church. But for, I guess, a decade or more, he was on WLYC on the radio up here in Williamsport, even though he lived down there, sent tapes on. So they were working in his church. There were relatives, actually his in-laws, were members here at Emmanuel Baptist. That's how they got hooked up with him. But I say that to say then sometimes I would go up to Knoxville with them, not every Sunday, but sometimes I'd go to Knoxville with them and to ride him in the car and we just laughed and carried on and the friendship got so bonded together. I just loved them. Just absolutely. You know, the Christian family, and this is what I'm trying to get at all this tonight. Boy, the Christian family, the brothers and sisters in Christ, isn't it magnificent? You know, I've been blessed because I've been in several churches, my father being a pastor. But I just love the family of God. I mean, they're like flesh and blood. And that's the way Larry and Lightabelle became to me. And it's like flesh and blood. They finished up schooling. They finished up their schooling before I did. And so my father in 1971... My father invited them to come back home here and to become him to become the assistant pastor and to help him start the Williamsport Christian School. And so in the fall of 1971, the Williamsport Christian School got started. Larry was the overseer, the overseer of that. I guess you'd say he was the principal, but there was only kindergarten, what was it, mom? Kindergarten, first grade, or did second grade? Just first. Kindergarten and first grade. That's where we started the Williamsport Christian School. We did not have the three-story education building. We did not have the big gymnasium. Oh, by the way, the church had grown substantially also. After my dad had come, it's gone from about 100, 120 people to 300. The auditorium was way too small. And so they knocked out the wall where the thermostats are. They knocked out the wall and extended the building clear back to here. So that's where we are today. But also, the reason I mentioned that, many of you know, in this half of the building, there's a basement under here. And that was the first facilities of the Williamsport Christian School. There are four classrooms down there, restrooms, and that's where the Williamsport Christian School started in the lower level here, under the direction of Larry Barrett and Lida Bell. Pastor Hinman's daughter and son-in-law. I ended up dropping out of school and coming back here. And Larry and Lightabelle lived in the little house. In fact, that little house was a garden house and just had dirt floors. And uh, when Larry and Lightabelle were moving back, the Springman said, "Let's turn that into an apartment." And so they poured cement on the floor and got it ready. Made a nice little apartment. I had one bedroom. Uh, just a living room and a bathroom and a bedroom and a kitchen. That's all. Just one bedroom. But they had no children. And then little baby Lisa was born. Do you remember her, Kathy, at all? Remember them? Little baby Lisa was born. Did you help, help them, uh, uh, Ramona? And uh, Lisa was born and she was just a doll. Had this dark, dark hair and and, uh, of course, I wasn't married. My parents didn't have any grandchildren. And, I mean, she was my dad's little sweetheart, wasn't she, Mom? I mean, he just thought she was like a granddaughter. She was everything to him. I'd say all that to say we were so very, very close. My father eventually went down to Brazil and preached down there. And Larry translated. And, but he went to Brazil and saw the church. Of course, they called their church. Emmanuel Baptist Church. They were out of our church here. They've stayed at it now 45 or so years, I guess it's been. Saying all that to say, you never know in life who's going to become your good friends. You never know who you are influencing. Even in our structure here tonight, you did not know who you were influencing. I know in my life I've had a lot of people influence me in powerful ways. So 
Brother Larry, we've been praying for him. For Lydell, his family. They had five children. Some of you that were here five years ago when we did uh, the Skype with them on a Sunday night. It was our 60th anniversary of the church. And we wanted to include them into that. Be it was Pastor Hemmons' daughter, son-in-law, and grandchildren. And uh, the grandchildren, there were five children. They all married people from Brazil. I forget how many grandchildren they have, but a bunch of them. And it was spectacular seeing all of the all the Barrett children and grandchildren. They're all around in front of the, the computer doing the Skype thing, a whole bunch of them, 20, 25, I don't know, 30, I don't know how many there were. And singing, faithful to the Lord Jesus, praising God down in Brazil, exactly what we're trying to do up here. It was so precious and wonderful. I'm saying all that tonight. Larry was, they had a funeral service this morning for Larry. And when he passed away yesterday morning, had the funeral this day, not very much time. As I said, I tried some yesterday. I traveled with them in cars, had meals with them. You may think, well, it's just, that's nice and just a friend. But even for the history of our church, I wanted to give you the history of our church because how often do you hear the history of our church? Probably never. But it's a wonderful heritage. And I love it because of the, the cohesiveness, the link, that I'll say here we are at this time frame, Larry and Lydabell, Larry with the Lord now, here we are in 2021, they still are serving the Lord, but it all comes back to young people, teenagers and even children, at Emmanuel Baptist Church. You know, the theme of the Bible has never changed. To win souls, to try to educate those that give one to Christ, disciple them, so that the gospel of Jesus Christ can continue here locally and around the world. Here at Emmanuel, we focused on that all through time. We try to stay focused on that. And for many of you, you don't even know all the young people that are out there serving someplace. I, can't, I tried to count up one time how many people came out of Emmanuel as teenagers in Emmanuel and were in full-time Christian work over the years. And uh, I don't know if I got them all or not. Some have dropped by the wayside. Some now are dead. But uh, at one point, I counted up 31 people that were in full-time Christian work. That's not even talking of all the wonderful lay people that grew up here, but 31 that were in full-time Christian work that were teenagers at Emmanuel Baptist Church. Now out there serving the Lord. To me, that's what church life is all about. It's not a social club. It's serious work for our King of Kings, our Savior, Jesus Christ. I love going to church. I love going to church. I love being here tonight. I love going to church. But it goes beyond just a love for the church. It's a love for Jesus Christ. But also beyond that, it's a love for Jesus Christ's work and for young people and to be able to continue on this church and where else throughout the world. That's our responsibility, but I consider it a privilege and honor. There's a scripture in Psalms, though, in verse chapter number 116. Psalms 116 and verse number 15. Psalm 116, verse 15. Short little verse, but I believe so powerful. It surely is my sentiments of the way I feel about church people and my friends in church life. Psalm 116, verse 15. Precious in the sight of the Lord is the death of his saints. Oh, I, I do not enjoy, I do not enjoy. In fact, probably one of my greatest dislikes being a pastor 
is to conduct funeral services. Last Friday, I had the service for Joey Vano. Once again, the band has had him in the church for a long time, but uh, Renee was there, and Regina was there, and Stacy was there, and Kelly, and they all were here, teenagers there in the Christian school, and I haven't seen them hardly at all in due time, but I love them as if they were my own daughters. That's just the way I am. I was so glad to see them. Joe, he was a fanatic Pirates fan and Steelers fan. Fanatic. In fact, with the casket, they had this huge Steelers blanket lying upon him. They had a terrible towel they kept it up on the back of the casket. Down at the cemetery, they played that, you know, that Steelers song? They were playing that on a little gadget there, and uh, it, fanatical about that. And he sang in the choir. He drove a bus. He uh, taught Sunday school. And see, he moved to Johnstown. I hadn't seen him for a long time. When he came home, he got sick. I saw him at the nursing home a year or so ago. And, I'm just saying all that. He passed away now. Precious in the sight of the Lord is the death of the saints. But you know, not just precious in the sight of the Lord. That's the way I feel. I go through this auditorium. I see my father. I see the Steels. Ramona's parents. I see Mrs. Sam Borsky. Kathy's mom. The Borowskis. Go all the way through here. I mean, I all through this auditorium. Nearly every family. I've had funerals for your loved ones, people that sat here. You know, it's going to be a grand, great, glorious day when we all get to heaven, isn't it? I, I almost told Brother Jay, he said, Brother Jay used to sing a uh, song when we all get to heaven. What a day of rejoicing that is going to be. But I wanted to give you that history. I, I've never done that before in my life. I wanted you to see how the Barretts, it wasn't just a close friend, but the, the very intricate part of where we are today, the Christian school. We are celebrating, just right now, the end of the school year, it will be 50 years old, our school. 50 years old! But it all started with Larry Lightabell and my dad that got this thing up and running. Here we are 50 years later by the grace of God. God has been so good to us here in Emmanuel, hasn't he? People have come, people have gone, many have gone to heaven, but he's been so good to us. And so because of Larry Barrett, not only my close friend, but a close friend of Emmanuel Baptist and an intricate part to the history of Emmanuel Baptist, I wanted you to hear all of that tonight. And, uh, Lida Bell, and they have a son, Kenny, that's a missionary, also with them. And other, their whole family's missionaries are with them, but Kenny and I, Tim, Timmy, we call him Timmy still. I don't know if he ever gets called Timmy. It's like Timmy Thomas, you know, they get to a certain age, they're Tim, right? But uh, Tim's communicated a lot with Ramona, sent those texts out there to all of us. Today I've been emailing back and forth with Tim, and one thing I did was ask Tim to give flowers to have at the funeral in behalf of our church. Uh, it was kind of difficult getting them sent from Williamsport, so contacted him, and he had flowers there today uh, at the funeral of Larry Barrett. I didn't want to lose sight of that link we have. So saying all of that, one more thing we want to do, and uh, I'm going to need some help from somebody here. Uh, Jason Tislin, you feeling okay? Okay, I know he's had a lot of tooth problems and so on. Can you come up here and get one of these mics for me and just hand it to Ramona, please? And the reason it's going to Ramona, she's going to sing a solo about heaven. <laughs> She'll sing solo, we won't hear her, right? Now let me just say, and uh, let's see who's on that mark. I'm not sure, I guess you know what number that is there as far as turning it up. But uh, the reason I want Ramona to, to get a microphone there, what she's going to do, you'll have to listen carefully to her phone. What time did that come in there, Ramona? Do you know? It came in at 3.30. What was it? 3.37. 3.37 this afternoon. So the funeral was earlier today. And uh, as I said, we sent flowers. I think she makes reference to that. 
So, but Lionel anyway, sent a, sent a, I'll just let you listen there, and it'll take a few minutes, listen carefully, and, uh, and she expresses her love even back here to you people, praying and amen to that experience. Dear Ramon and Frank, we are home now from the viewing and the funeral service. We had lunch and afterwards folks took a little rest around here. I wasn't able to really sleep, but um, just thinking over the beautiful day. It was such a beautiful place that the Lord gave us for they to be buried and such a beautiful service. And so many wonderful friends and all our church family that could come. Some have COVID, even our Abigail and Diego and, and, Beth, and little Matt couldn't come because they have COVID, but they're doing well and treating it. But um, it was a beautiful time, and Larry's life was honored. And this is a beautiful arrangement of flowers that came from the Emmanuel Baptist Church, your church there in Mixport. They're called crowns here, and they make them and they put them on a pedestal. And Larry had 20. <laughs> it was very beautiful. And he was very much loved. Many missionary friends came, all those who could. There were um, about, I don't know, maybe eight couples from different places around here from our mission and from uh, uh, other missionaries. And um, it was a great tribute. And his life was honored, his service for the Lord. Um, I guess it's not good for me to send this back the audio because sometimes I cry, but the Lord has given us peace and, and maybe carry on the ministry that Harry began here. He did touch many lives and I, there have been many people saved and people who have gotten right with the Lord and gone on to serve him. And I'm just so grateful for the years that the Lord gave Harry to me. I want to be faithful to until he calls me home or until the Lord comes. Thank you so much to your friends for your love and prayers. Thank you for caring for us and thank you for all that you've done and we'll be waiting for you here to visit us. Praying that somehow these vaccines start getting out and we have a little bit better situation in the world. Even though they had um, restrictions, they were so kind to us there. They had no other ones that being um, uh, any other funerals there. So they opened everything up and let our church people and all the friends and loved ones spread out all over because they can't be close together. And so everyone was able to participate in the service. And then there's always a procession behind the casket to the burial place and we sang the whole way and we sang around and so um, buried him and then put the, the crowns on over the grave site and then one of our dear missionary friends who we've been um, together all these years prayed at the end our BM and I dread to pray during the service. And our three pastors here each spoke. And we had singing. And our granddaughter Mel sang his favorite song, Now I Belong to Jesus. And then the family finished by singing the song, which was pre-taped. You're faithful, faithful. You've been faithful. It was very beautiful. Thank you, dear ones, for your prayers. You know, I know it's an odd service. It's a really odd service. People might would think it was crazy service. I don't know. But I, I 
my heart is exposed to you tonight. And may I urge you to always love each other. And envy, jealousy, coveting, all these things, pride, so often gets into churches. And is it really worth it to have those ways? Love each other. Just love each other. Even as Jesus loves us. So that when it comes times of sadness, Eric Moyer's grandfather there, please pray for him. Mr. Moyer, once again, I'm telling you, uh, that man there, uh, I dearly learned to love him. And I don't even know how many furnaces he's put in our building. Probably maybe three at least over the years and a lot of other work as well as plumbing and all that kind of thing. And but right at the corner of Jack. And uh, you know, in the end, in the end, when someone's leaving this world behind, you just hope you're friends with everybody, right? Man, I don't want any enemies. When I'm saying my last, taking my last breath, I don't want any enemies. I want, I want everyone to have a good relationship with me, me with them. And I know, again, it's an odd service tonight, but I think it's a good Wednesday night service. And I hope that we'll be unified praying one for another, just loving on each other, sharing one with another, doing all we can to make life for our brothers and sisters the very best life that we can possibly make one for another. Please pray for Lida Bell, for the ministry there. Obviously, Larry was the missionary. He was the pastor. He was the dad. He was the husband. So there's a big void there. <clears> His <throat> kids can fill in, I'm sure, now, but it's a big void. Please pray for Lila Bell and uh, for all of her children there. And that's the way it should be, not just for somebody like that, but with everybody all the time, right? Let's stand, please, and we'll be done for the night. Our dear, precious Lord, we thank you that you have made it possible Though we sorrow, but we do not sorrow like those that have no hope. And tonight, dear God, I hope I've done the right thing, but I just felt impressed by the Spirit of God to tell of the history of our church. Probably most do not even know it, but also, dear God, that to give tribute to Larry Barrett tonight, whom we dearly love, but not only dearly love, but had such an intricate part of this ministry as he directed Camp Emmanuel for several years and, and was the youth director and the assistant pastor and, and just was a big player. Of course, Lida Bell growing up and always on bus routes, even as a teenager. And, and uh, we think of other young people that came along in time that Lida Bell as a young adult lady impacted and influenced so powerfully. Lord, I thank you for this place called heaven and so for Larry, though we did not get to see him very much, so glad they were able to come home a few years ago and able to be here that night. And as you were, you allowed us to be able to have uh, one of those social gatherings over in the gym. And what a great night! That'll be a night in my mind that'll flood my mind through all my life, where he and I just sat for a long time and talked. And I thank you for their faithfulness. I pray that at this time of transition that the Spirit of God would work and whether it's Tim or whomever it may be that will be taking over, that that will be a smooth transition. The devil would not have a place to work, but that the Spirit of God would work in a mighty way and the souls would be saved. And Lord, it's very evident how much that they all love you. And Lord, we're so thankful that Emmanuel Baptist here in Williamsport had a great impact upon all of that. And Oh, how this church has had a great impact upon my life and my dear friends here at Emmanuel. I'm so grateful, so, so grateful. Lord, I pray that you help us to always love each other, that the devil would never have a place to work and split the church up, but that we would be united, carrying out the work of the Almighty God and our Savior, Jesus Christ, spreading the gospel here locally and around the world. Lord, our heart's desire is that you'd be pleased with us 
the heart's de my heart's desire is that someday I will hear you say, well done, thou good and faithful servant. In the meantime, help us to be all found faithful. Bless us with you in our separate ways. In Jesus' name we pray.